Hello, so I'm just going to walk you through uh, the swarm elators. Hello, so I'm just going to walk you through this uh, swarm elators device. And um, basically, this uses this model called swarm elators, and you can look online for more information about that. There's t different papers and resources. Um, I'll even throw in a link uh, to an interactive example at the bottom here so you can know where this comes from. But um, yeah, so these are, this is a model and we have different um, swarm elators they're called. I can refer to them as like particles or oscillators or I'll just call them swarm elators for this video. And um, and what they are is, uh, well, they have a positional state, you can see, uh, and you can see they light up. And this is the internal LFO that each of them have. Each, each of them have an internal oscillator. And, and they attract each other in different ways. Like, all of them affect each other's positions. But also, all of them affect each other's phase, oscillation phase, their internal oscillator. And the phase and positions also affect each other. So you have all these inter interconnected uh, parameters for each swarm elator, and this causes different swarming and sinking or unsinking behaviors, depending on the parameters. And then this device just takes advantage of that uh, situation and gives you a bank of oscillators that you can map um, the uh, swarm elator attributes to the different pr audio parameters. So for instance, you can get the position or the internal LFO and apply that to the pitch, cutoff, uh, to uh, FM, yada yada of, of the oscillator bank. So that's kind of the general idea, just applying the swarm relators model uh, to this audio oscillator. Great, so now I'm just going to kind of go through the whole thing and describe each part so you really understand each part. So we'll start with the left side, and these are the parameters of the swarm relators model. So they're not audio parameters, but uh, depending on how you have, have things mapped over here, they will affect the sound. Um, first thing to note is if you click the center, we reset uh, and re-randomize the positions and things about the swarm elators. So just so you know that if I click here and that happens, that's what I'm doing. <laughs> okay, um, so first we have here the sync. And this this is how much... Uh, attraction there is uh, of the phases so like the higher the sync the more in phase the the freak uh, the l the internal oscillators will become and their frequencies will match and they'll become more synced and the opposite has the opposite effect uh, I think it will keep keeping them out of sync from each other so that's how the sync parameter kind of works. And then this one below here, attract, this deals more with the positional attraction. And um, they do have a, they do have like an inverse square law or something about how they, they do have a re repel force when they get near each other. Um, but this force is long distance, this attraction, it doesn't matter how close or how far they are. And if it's positive, then it means that swarm elators that have a similar phase in their internal oscillator will attract each other. And if it's negative, it's the opposite. So I guess swarm elators with a different phase will attract each other more. And as their ch phases change, you know, this will change the dynamics um, over time, even depending on how you set it up. Depending on how you set these up, some might be more static and some might be continuously moving. Um, right, so rate, that just deals with the rate of the whole simulation. Um, and that will affect the movements and the oscillators, because they're all connected.
So that's one thing important to keep in mind. The LFO rates and movements, they're all interconnected to each other in this, um, which can be cool for complex effects, but also maybe a little frustrating if you want to kind of have some separation there, but that's kind of the environment we're in. All right, um, spread. So spread, basically all of them have like a velocity um, that's kind of that's kind of informed by the me, me, uh, the average velocity of all of them to help help keep them towards the center, kind of revolving around. As far as I understand, um, at zero, none of this velocity won't be applied at all, and they all kind of usually get more grouped together, which can be nice because usually they have hundreds of of these, um, but we don't. And when they have hundreds, you know, they're all repelling each other because they're close together. So sometimes it's nice to creep the spread down so they get close together and start moving each other. They won't m always move as much with the repelling force if they're further apart. However, this will, once you go up, it'll add that velocity. Um, and like if I add these dummy, I'll get more into it. Yeah, this will affect um, the dynamics of that a bit anyway um, it will it doesn't always spread them out it, it but generally does and just depends on the other settings um, okay now this one's important oh they all are I guess but this one really is of uh, the frequency variation so at zero they should all have about or the same they should have all the same frequency of their internal oscillators and if it's up higher, their internal oscillators will have a greater variety of frequency. However, the sync parameter will affect that too. If it's a low ver variety and a high sync, I think they will become basically in sync again. So these kind of play with each other. Also, this will, if this is lower, there will be less movement usually, depending on the settings. But if this is higher and you have like negative attraction and stuff, because the frequencies are changing, then this the the phases um, that were attracting it one swarm or later before will change. So then it will keep moving its position. All right, noise. Just add some noise in the positional movement. Um, okay, that's that side. Now this little menu here. Um, deals with like the main things about the oscillators. Um, this is the number of swarmulators or oscillators that are like active ones, the ones that are making sound, you know, like if I add one. There. But now we have these dummy ones down here, and these don't make sound, but they still have all the same other things that the swarmulators have. Um, and this is so that you can change the dynamics without adding more to the sound or more to the CPU. And um, then you can have, you know, like when there's just two, it's going to be different. When there's 52 now, uh, the dynamics will be different. It'll turn up the frequency and stuff like that. But yeah. Uh, so this dummies just help to achieve different dynamics that might be desirable. Um, and then, okay, then we have here the oscillator shape. Oh, I forgot to make a preset with noise. Hmm. All right, um, and then here we have the internal LFO's shape because cause in the actual formulator, it's just a ongoing ramp. Um, but then we can apply that to different basic shapes we're familiar with. So up, down, triangle, rect, and noise. So yeah, and then this scales the rate of their internal oscillators. But this also will affect the position movements and all that since they're all interconnected. Um, see, they move slower now that the rate is slower and they move faster now that the rate is faster because they're all interconnected. Um, okay. Now, let's go to the audio parameters. So this is fairly more straightforward. 
um, despite these little ambiguous boxes. So we have, these are the main parameters. There's pitch, FM, cutoff, uh, I mean filter, resonant low pass filter, panning and, and the amplitude. And each of the main ones, they have um, drop down menus to select their modulation source. So let's go to two oscillators and let's turn them all to none. Okay, and let me turn off the spreading. This is so we really get what's going on here. Okay, so now they're gonna be like the same. Even though we have two, they're exactly the same because nothing is changing their values. Um, so let's start at pitch. The Underneath the drop-down menu for each of them, there's two little sliders. You see two sliders on it. And the first leftmost slider is the center value. So this would be like the actual pitch value. Okay. And then the next one next to it is how much the values are spread between the formulators. Now, if no modulation is selected, it will just start with the first swarmulator to the last swarmulator and spread this range between them. So if I turn the range to zero, they're all the same pitch. When I spread it out, they get equally spread, but they don't change because there's no modulation. Now, if I change to a modulation such as the position of the swarmulator, the internal oscillator, now their pitch is mapped to X, the X position. And now this spread becomes just the range that's modulated. So if they're all the way to the left or right, because it's X, it will go to the ends of this range. Um, and then LFO, that's their internal LFO. So right now it's at a sign. And they all have different frequencies, the frequency variations high, so their internal LFOs are all at different frequencies. But it's controlling the pitch. And okay. And then the last one is spray. And that that how that works is that at the beginning of each phase of the LFO, it will choose a new random value based on the center and spread in range. So spray is kind of just like an LFO on noise, but but if but if each parameter has spray, they'll all have different sprayed values. So it's not quite the same as just using that. Great. So let's keep this on spray, and then below pitch is uh, the scale tuning. And actually, you can drop on here scale files. So I'll show you so that you can do custom tunings. Um, right, so here, we'll drop this ancient Greek chromatic. And yeah, now we get that tuning and you can save it and it will keep that tuning. Um, and then you can offset the tunings here. You can also press MIDI notes to offset the tunings. Um, I'm playing notes on my keyboard now. And it just offsets the tunings. Okay, um, so we got that going on. And then, and so yeah, this menu and two sliders are the same for all the main parameters. Um, so I won't go over it again, but let's see what other things we have going on. So the FM, this is the FM amount or index, and at zero there's none happening with no spread. So right now we have no FM. But if I turn it up and spread it out, and right now it's at a one to one ratio, so it sounds pretty clean, but we can dirty it up. And um, yeah, I like to do like small difference right be before the 
kind of whole number, like 0 0.49, 0 0.99, and then you can get these nice, almost detune effects. Um, okay, and then the filter is a l resonant low-pass filter, so you'll always kind of have a resonant filtery sound, even if the cue's down. And then same thing here, we got, let's do something with more harmonics. Let's spread it. Let's add it to the Y this time. And then panning, I usually do X. And spread it based on the X axis. And then the amplitude, same thing. And then a master gain. Yeah, so that's pretty much it. I mean, um, and you just kind of mess with all these parameters to get different um, dynamics. And if you add a little LFO to something here, it will be huge. All right. Oh, I missed one thing. And it's this little save button. So this, this save button will save the current position and everything about the swarmulator so that if you reload a preset, it will come to that exact same state. But maybe you'd want it to be different each time, so I left it optional. And of course, it changes all the time, so you have to decide when's the moment you want to save it and start recreating from there. All right, I uh, hope you enjoy.